We do greet you all that have joined us on this Kid Fay in Maths. Simply truth of Torah. We must constantly re-examine Torah that it may re-examine us. It's vitally important to us as a nation that we must emphasize with great emphasis the strength of Torah. And the only way we can emphasize the strength or give emphasis to Torah it is through the display of our lives and the activities of our lives and what we do. That's why it must be a constant reminder unto us the value, the importance, anything that is emphasized, we place emphasis because there is great value and great strength to that issue. And the Torah must become the most important, valuable piece of document that we possess, that we have the privilege to peering upon it, and above all that we can sense the depth of that in our bosom, knowing that by the pinsmanship of Almighty Yahweh, He has inscribed, He has khattab, He has written, the Torah in our bosom. And the Torah brings the great wealth of Yah's riches. We as a nation, we have not procured that because there is a factor in our lives, and that is all of our lives, uh, that impede us from reaching that great zenith of the mountain of Yah's, as the older ones would say, his how you're calling. And so we are always at the threshold, babies drinking milk, because we don't understand the beauty and the depths of Torah. It must be emphasized every day in our activities, our action, our walk, our conversation. Everything we do must be based upon the parameter of what is emphasized in Torah. It is one thing that is vital to us today. And that is our rafa, our health. And we tend not to examine the Torah to find the remedies. We're guilty of that. We're always seeking out every alternative for what Torah commands and demands. And I want to teach tonight. I want to show us that which impedes us from reaching that excellence. We're going to have to but that. We're going to have to trust Yah. We're going to have to have confidence. And the only way we acquire that ascertain or procure that unto our bosom, our minds, our liba, is that Torah must be emphasized continuously and consistently. In order for us to reach that apex, where there is confidence. When Moshe came down from the mounts with Yah, he came down a brand new man. His countenance is shone like the noonday sun. And that is what the Torah does. It is a great light. It is the light of Yah's wisdom. And when he speaks, it is for our edification, for our growth and our strength. I want to begin here tonight. I want to teach from the concept of the healing health of Yah's way. Not what we have deduct from every kind of philosophy of healing. I want to take a procedural simple step tonight and define Yah's way of reaching that zenith of not only a healthy physical body. Well, man, does it mean that we won't die? That's not what I am saying. 
He has given us the riches of his Torah. He has spoken words from his bosom. And there's great resolve and resources when Yah speaks. And the only way we can understand that we must hear what the messengers, the wise men, that have come before our time, they have experienced the depths of Yah's wisdom like no other generation of men. And they have a great plethora of wealth and wisdom as to the healing health of Yah's way. The herbs of Yah, the herbs. You know that what the world is teaching concerning the herbaremonies, they're not right. I don't care if you get upset with what I say. That's not Yah's way. I will emphasize and show us with great emphasis what Yah means when he talks about herbs and the herb. I will show you what he means. There's no way that he will give the wicked this dispense of great knowledge. That is from the bread of his healing. And that will cost us so much for a few capsules. When he has granted in the earth the great healing. And for our bodies to be cleansed. And the capacity of the wealth of our bodies. There is a process. When we begin here in the writings. One of the profound, prolific prophets, scholar of his time. And he speaks to this degree. He says to Yisraya, I want you to understand that Almighty Yahweh, he bara, created. By the power of his own mind. Uh, we don't understand that concept. I don't understand the, the beauty of man and his unique power and the sculpturing of that, not by Yah sculpturing him with some clay or dirt. He spoke. His creative power, the ability to create what we call something out of nothing when Yah speaks and everything he says it is of great substance because it is something. So he dispensed this knowledge unto us that Yah, Omar Yahweh, he created the herb. He created every herb, the hasad. Now I know what we think herbs are. We believe it to be some kind of capsule that has been processed to the degree that there is no essential medicinal value in it at all. We have the concept that the herbs that Yah created are fuel or thing, catnip, and things of that nature, those are the herbs, but that's not so. That's not what he's talking about. So what he is saying that Yah created the herbs, we will get into the intricates and the depths of that. He created the herbs from the earth. And he says that a man that has the hukmah, a wise man, will not despise them. Now on the way as we proceeded over here, the old man was talking to me. I tend to let him talk. And he was saying to me, I, I, I love the greens. I love uh, just anything really that's green. Now, this is what Yah is talking about. He is not talking about some kind of capsule. He is talking about every kind of green thing, whether it is a shrub, whether it is cabbage and colors. That is what he is talking about. He's talking about a discipline that discipline our bodies whereby that our bodies are healthy and our minds are, are healthy. So he gave us the herbs. He gave us the herbs. He created them out of the earth. Not some kind of little pill. Not something that we go to some kind of apocryphy and buy some powders and some herbs. 
We spend our monies when you take $10 and buy collard seeds and cabbage. It's more than enough to maintain the health of a nation of people. We're missing the elements that it takes to get to that degree. So he created the greenery, the green things. The things that are green in the earth. He created the collard greens, the mustard greens, uh, the lamb's quarter. Now these are things that as we grew, we've never liked them. These are things that we don't have that passion for. We don't have that great love for things like that. He created the cabbage uh, uh, and all of those things out of the earth. There's a reason why. And he said that a man that is wise, uh, he will not despise the collard greens. He will not reject the cabbage and collard greens and the lettuce and things like that. It is greater than a banquet of a table of ox meats. Our health is diminishing. Our bodies, our central nervous system, which everything operates from that central nervous system. We're in bad shape. We're in bad shape mentally. We're in bad shape spiritually. We don't look well physically. uh, Our minds do not function properly. uh, It's because of everything that we're eating. He created the herbs of the earth. uh, And when a man is wise, he doesn't despise those things. Uh, He doesn't look at his plate and say, where is the meat? Because he has meat. Listen to what Yah says here. He says, was not water made sweet with a bitter tree? When he commanded Moshe, was it not made sweet? Is not the Mayam, the waters we drink, uh, this living Torah made sweet uh, by the power of the evidence in Yahshua HaMashiach? Is it not sweet to endure or to experience the afflictions uh, because we have a sure word of Imunah? The waters were made sweet. That's why we must emphasize Torah when the waters of the floods rage against our minds during the day. And there's a bitter assault in us. Uh, There is no way that the the sweetness shall prevail uh, unless we drink the living water of Torah. Was not the waters made sweet with the tree in order that his power might be made known This is what this is all about, that the power of Yah be made known. We don't emphasize Torah, and we we are unfaithful. We have doubts. We have no confidence in Yah. We have a great talk. We all got great game. But when something is emphasized, or there's great emphasis uh, in our lives of that matter or the situation, you see the growth uh, uh, and that thing which is represented in us uh, through our character. And our ruach. So he did that to make known his power. He said, For if you're sure into a bitter world, uh, into our bitter hearts, into our bitter mind uh, that had poisoned us and brought death, uh, to make his power known unto us, to make us sweets. He is the true tree that makes uh, life, even in the midst of his great battles, sweet. He is the true sea tree uh, in the midst of the bitter world uh, where all circumstances prevail against you. He makes life sweet. Yeah. It is the emphasis of that sweetness of Yahshua HaMashiach uh, that makes life sweet uh, in the midst of, uh, of great calamities uh, and difficulties. Uh. That's all right. Don't stop him from that. Hallelujah. He also, and he gave skill to men that he might be honored in his marvelous works. He did not give skills to all men. He gave skills to men to be skillful, to be knowledgeable, to always re-examine that we may understand what Torah is emphasizing that it may produce the health of our conscience and our bodies and our, and our physical state of mind. It was one thing that my mother would always say in the midst of her great battles of sickness. She would always reassure us, although she did not know the power of Yom, that she's going to be around 
until all of her children are grown and able. And there were those on their dying bed, beds were able to get up because they had that emphasis and that great strength. And Yah honored that in the midst of their ignorance. How do we know that? Because in some of our most uh, trying trials, we would say in our ignorance, if you deliver me from that, I will serve you. He honors his word. So he gave men skill uh, that he might be honored and his marvelous works, his works are, are marvelous. Everything he does. To see the seed grow from the soil and to see that herb produce life. I marvel every day as I go to the greenhouse and I go every day. I go and examine the ceilings there. I go to look at them. I go and uh, my eyes peer upon each individual cell. I can tell which one is a little dry and those that have more than enough mayam. Because it's vital. It is important. We have no strength in our bodies. We have no control over nothing at all. We have no, as the old folks would say, no get up and no go at all. Something is missing. Our bodies are lethargic. We sit down, we get sleepy all day long. We don't. As soon as we sit before Yah's house, there's the drunkenness of uncleanliness there. And that's just a fact. Listen to what he says here. He gave skill to men so that they can honor his great work. What? He tells us by them. By them, by what? the great herbs and what he has brought forth out of the earth he said by them he heals and he takes away the pain he heals and he takes away the pain he mape he mape there are times that I'm working and of course my knees and my body doesn't feel at its apex but the more I began to process in that way I get strong and strong, and I make myself prevail. I talk to me all the time. You're not going to walk like that. Stand up, man. Straight up. I make myself do it. So he's given us all that to heal us. Yah did. Also, he says that the pharmacist, uh, he makes with the herbs uh, compounds. He takes the herbs, and he makes compounds with them. His work will never be finished. He will never. Because you're going to always have one that is sick, incapacitated. And that's why our bodies must be nourished constantly. That's why. And those of the diaspora, they can work all day long in a field in the midst of the hot sun. And they will nibble all day long. They will eat whether it was the watermelons or the berries. And as a child, I knew how to go and find the herbs on the trees. I knew the ones that were poor. And it was almost innate, taught by our forefathers. I could go and find things. I could find the wild cherries. I could find the green apples. I could find so many different things to eat. And so by the herbs, you think that. The compounds that the pharmaceutical industry has such power. And it is a multi-trillion dollar industry. You think that is of Yah. It's not of Yah. He has given us a simple process of health. The herbs. The growing of the greenery. And to grow them. And to eat them. And to eat them consistently. And to eat them constantly. He made them from the earth that have the essential elements uh, and vitamins uh, to enrich our bodies to be strong. He did not make us to be weak. So the pharmacist, he makes a compound uh, from it. His work shall never be done. uh, And from his health is upon the face uh, of the earth. Now this is a command directly unto Yah that we, we need to do it. And the reason we negate to do it because of our unfaithfulness. Ezra the Nobi says that an unfaithful man will die in his unfaithfulness. But we don't trust Yah, we're going to die that way. And so he gives us a direct command. He says this. Uh, he says, uh, my son, 
my son. He says, when you are halal, when you are sick, when you're holy, when sickness and disease, uh, and when your body doesn't function the way, and when you have no sense of the functions of your body, he says, my son, he says, my people, when you are sick, do not neglect. There is one thing that we neglect to do. The most important essential of our health. He said, don't neglect. We neglect our friendship, our love for each other. But he said, do not neglect but to pray to Yah. We run for every kind of help. We're dropping every kind of pill. But Yah says, when you're sick, don't neglect. We neglect that. We don't pray. We have no prayer lives. We make excuses. We can't get up to pray. The old ones will come from miles around. And even all of their ignorance, they did not neglect the power of prayer. We look at every result. This is easy here. My son, when you're sick, our minds, when we get sick, are, are they, it's in such a, a torrid pace, uh, looking for some remedy. There is one remedy. Pray. Yes, pray. Pray. My son, don't neglect to pray. We don't pray. We don't pray. We don't pray. We will, in our hypocritical ways, in our misogynizing or misogynist ways, uh, which are full of lies and superficiality. We will say, oh, I pray. No, he said, don't neglect. We don't want to get down and pray. We don't want to pray for nobody. We don't want to do it. Man gets sick. He becomes fearful of dying and losing his life. He becomes fearful of the results. Yah says, when you get sick, do not neglect to pray. When something you neglect to do, you don't have no compassion for it. When a mother neglects to care for a child, uh, she doesn't care what the results produce. Uh, and because we neglect to pray, we frankly do not care, nation of Yah. And the reason we neglect to pray is because Torah is not emphasized in our walk. Uh. He said, don't neglect to pray. Do we pray? No. We don't pray. Do we neglect prayer? Sure we do. We neglect that. He tells us of the excellent herbs that Yah created. The pharmacists, the, the pharmacists, the doctors will, will, will measure the compound until you take this. He said, but when you get sick, the first order of business is to pray. That's the first order of business. We don't do that. One sick among you, the first order is to pray. That's the first order. We don't do that. Because we'll become so fearful. We're so unfaithful. We're going to die that way, Yisrael. Yeah, whether you buy it or not. The Torah says an unfaithful man shall die in his unfaithfulness. Confidence in an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. It causes pain to rest in the midst of your bosom in every aspect of your life. You will know an unfaithful man. And we neglect. We, we have no passion to pray. It is some momentary thing that massage our slowful nature. And then we leave it alone after that. There is no travailing. You can't say to the house, let's come to pray. Let's bow before Yah. Let's come and pray for Yah's resolution. You don't have that. The daughters of Tizayon did that. You ask daughters to pray. I don't care where you go. They find every kind of damn excuse not to pray. You should never neglect to pray. I watch hypocrites come. Oh, I'm a praying woman. You're not a praying woman. We neglect that. When you're sick, there's sick one among us. We neglect prayer. We don't offer up the pala unto Yah. We can't see, and the reason we don't offer that is because we don't know the marvelous works of Yah. We don't constantly examine Torah. We don't know the marvelous works of Yah. 
And that's why the, the apocryphal or the farmer said his work is never done because from that element derives another element. From that element there's another. From that one another. From that. His work is never done. And Yah has given us a proven remedy of our health. He has given us that. Here we want bubble gum and popsicles instead of colored greens and Brussels sprouts. Listen to me, I, I, I'm saying this, uh, I don't say this uh, with some kind uh, uh, of some kind of uh, light or to exude me. In this little crowd, why would I do that? I can eat the same thing every day. I can eat the very same thing every day, day in, day out, day in, day out. I don't need no pork chops, no lamb chops, no steak chops. I don't need any of that. I don't need fried fish, broiled fish, baked fish. I don't need any of that. I can eat the same thing every day. Every single day. I can eat collard greens. I can eat kale. I can eat Brussels sprouts. I can eat every day. Put me a little rice in there. I can eat it every day. I don't have to have fried chicken with it. I don't have to have no chicken wings. I don't have to have no broil salmon. He made the herbs. He made the herbs. Our bodies don't even function. Our bodies don't even sweat. Our central nervous system is a shot. Listen to what he says. I'm not going to back down Yisra'ya. He says this. <clears throat> Hallelujah. My son, when you are sick, do not neglect, but pray to Yah, and he will heal you. The reason we don't do that is because we are unfaithful. We don't trust Yah. We don't understand his magnificent, marvelous works. We don't emphasize that. There is no emphasis on that. We don't look at the beauty of the sun. We don't look at the beauty of his creation. We don't walk out and see what he has done and the greatness of, of his mighty power. That from the earth he, he, barah, he created the herbs just like he did man. And in the midst of the great battles of his nation now. He calls the tree of life Yahshua to make the bitter journey sweet. And that's what Yahshua does for us. He makes everything sweet for us. Even in the midst of our great battles, he makes it sweet for us. He will heal us. And then Shirak says that he will make you to me. He will make you whole, complete. He will make your mind complete. He will make your heart complete. He will make you complete, Israel. You will know that it is the Abba. You will know that it is by his great hand and his mighty power. And you will see the mightiness of his marvelous work. We overemphasize everything but what Yah commands. David could have eaten anything. He could have eaten the best of oxen. He could have ate the plethora of the sea. The Red Sea, the great Nile, the great Euphrates, the best of any kind of fish life. He said, but in the midst of all of that, I want to share a word of wisdom with you. He speaks to us here. Shalomo, Shalomo. He says, better is dinner with Iarach, uh, with herbs, with the herb, the collard greens. Our forefathers ate the collard greens and the turnips. And the cornbread. The men rose up without an alarm clock. And they were strong. The women may have been burly women. But they were strong. And they were laborious women. Our women today we have nothing. Our men they're weak. And, they're, and, they're, and their street is pillaging. He says better. Is dinner of herbs. Where there's a great love for Torah. Where there is a chab. A chava. Where there is love, he said, then a stall ox, a fat oxen that you have fat up. You have put the ox in a stall, it is fat. And the ox is fattened. And everything on the ox, and you know that as you roast it on the fire, the fragrance and the spices that shall permeate it. He said, it's better to have a meal that you can appreciate, yeah, and love the very beauty of what he has done. And see his wondrous works in that pile of that great herb plate. And see that. 
and show your expression to Yah with great love uh, than to sit down with oxen. And people would say, this is not cooked right. I don't like that. Who cooked it? It's a little too much season. This is our blatant uh, hypocrisy. He says, better to sit down with some cornbread, some turnip greens, uh, and some turnips in that, than to sit down with those uh, that are so engrossed with their belly and they want the oxen and they got it in every kind of way you want it and yet there is that there is complaining there there is not an appreciation there and they can tell you what's wrong with it what this doesn't taste as well to whose palate how you know it doesn't taste well it's better to sit down with colored greens and rice you show an appreciation and you see the marvelous beauty of Yah's hand that he has given you bread today and to sit down with those with the fatted stall ox and you eat from that ox and yet there is no love for his Torah there is no love and appreciation for nothing that he does and we tend to fall into the ladder of that great wisdom that Shalomo spoke they would sit down at the tables and eat the collard greens and the pork salad and the little meat that they had, it wasn't much. The men could eat out of the garden as they worked in the laborious. It was laborious. They didn't have fat all on them. They didn't have titties like women. They were strong and lean and their bodies were tight and hard. And they could eat all day long. The berries, the blueberries, and every, the watermelons, the cucumbers, the tomatoes. And they would get home a big pot of what may be a little meat, uh, but all kinds of vegetables in that pot. Uh, the carrots and the turnips uh, and the colored greens. Uh, he made that. Hallelujah. This wicked generation and food stamps have messed up those of the dark hue. They don't know how to eat. They eat damn junk. My mother didn't have money like that. We ate cabbages every day. Every day. They were cheap and inexpensive. And rice, and biscuit. You got one piece of chicken. Not two. You got one. You didn't get two or three hamburgers. You got one. You didn't get but one hot dog, as they would say. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad the way y'all brought me up. I appreciate that. I'm glad that I wasn't in a position to eat excessively. I'm glad of that. I'm glad. Listen to what great wisdom will instruct us in. <clears throat> the wisdom of Shalomo speaks so profoundly here. As Yah, as he instructs us that Yah shows us in Torah, when we began to emphasize Torah, in the midst of Torah, we can see the reason of the purpose for everything that transpired. There's a reason for everything that happens in our lives. So he begins to utter here with great insight as to why Yah has allowed certain things to come upon us. We can see our Arzachin here is not here. And he allowed, he suffered that to remind us. We have neglect prayer. We don't have no prayer life. The men are not weeping before Yah. They don't even pray. The daughters of Tizion get antsy and upset when there, is an, uh, when there is a call to come to the altar. You find an excuse. You have never made an excuse to go to Walmart, to Dollar Mart. You've never made an excuse to fill your belly with what you want. You're craving beyond your ability to get it. You've never done that. But he gives me some insight here. He says, Re'ah, all those things have happened for what? To remind, stir up our mind, to remind us, Israel, of the oracles of his writings, his teachings, his speech, that they were bitten. And although they were bitten because they disobeyed Yah, he says, but they were quickly delivered. He has Yoshach. 
Your show has delivered us from every bondage there is. But they were quickly delivered. Why? Least they should fall into deep forgetfulness. That's how much his love kindness, his chassid, his raham, his great compassion, his great kindness, the fervor of his love. And although the, there are things that we encounter, it's only but for a moment. He says, at least they shall fall into deep forgiveness. Uh, and then they become unresponsive. There is no responsiveness uh, to Yah's great kindness. We don't respond to his kindness. We don't respond to his love kindness. Uh. He said, unless we become unresponsive. I will say to us at times, uh, oh, I look at everything. Lift your hands uh, and say hallelujah. And it's the same one that never lift their hands. I said, is that amazing? I'm not going to allow you to rebuke me. Yeah. Same ones. Yeah. But yet with some foolish, jar talk. <laughs> They're unresponsive. Because we were not reminded of what has been written by the Navi, the prophet. That's why we don't respond. He said they, are, they become unresponsive. Unresponsive. <clears throat> To your kindness. He said, I want to tell you something. He said, neither the herbs, the great herbs, nor those great remedies that were made by the pharmacists to dress and mollify your sores and your pains, uh, none of that will cure you. None of that takes away our faith from you. He said, none will cure them. He said, but it was the word of Yah. It was the promises of Yah that cures us. It was the waiting diligently upon Yah that he said, but it was your word. Uh, that this is the wisdom of Yah speaking unto us. Uh, he said, but it was your word, oh Yah. <clears throat> he said, it is the power of your word that heal all men. Uh, it heals all men. And the reason we don't wait for the mape or the rafa, reason we because we have neglect prayer. Wives don't pray, husbands don't pray. We don't teach children to pray. And we don't pray. We're impatient with God. We will not miss the dollar store. We have no patience and no love to come and simply pray. And this is the truth. I'm not taking anything back. I'm telling us our unresponsiveness to God and our shape and the reason we're in the condition that we're in. We're in bad shape. We're in bad shape. Our health is bad. And don't tell me you eat right. When you said to me, I eat right. No, you don't eat right. None of us eat right. Can I say this? I, I don't say a lot of things. I don't tell things because people tend to think, well, he's trying to show off as though that he should be extinct. Now, I told you all the story when I was out there in California, we had the meeting, the young man that was the uh, aridologist, he must have some kind of reputation. If the, there are two princes and the two princes of uh, Dubai, they invited him. I still have the text message that he sent me. They invited him to come to their country for two weeks. All expenses paid. Now, he didn't make no money off me. He only came because there was a sister when she met Rafael, she fell in love and said, I want you to meet someone. Let him, please. And so she calls this individual. And she tells him, you know, I don't have no money. He knew that. He said, but there's a beautiful sister here. She said, I want you to go see her, please. Well, of course, I wanted to see him before. I was going to let him even touch my Isha. And so when I met the young man, I, I, I was intrigued by his uh, very pleasant man, very beautiful young man, young and Strong. So when he did her, he did me. I, I didn't tell y'all everything. See, because people tend to think, well, he thinks he is someone known. When he began to examine my eyes, the first thing he began, he said, wow. 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 He wasn't going to get any money from me. Someone gave me a $100 offering. I gave him the not money, not because of what he did. 
I liked him. I liked his beauty, his spirit. I had use for that $100 bill. I was going to say, Mommy, you get 50 I'll take 50 mm -hmm. I can buy me something with that. I liked the man's ru'ah. I really liked his spirit. I really did like the young man's spirit. And he kept saying, wow, oh my. He says, this man is a very bright and intelligent man that analyzes concept. You can see, he said, come here, look at him. And his body has such magnificent ability to heal itself. Why? Well, it's in the book. I will show you what we have stopped. That's why we, we're not healed. That's why. See, I, I didn't tell you all of that because I know how we are. Oh, he think he's somebody. Well, what do you think you are? He said, this man is bright. As a matter of fact, he said, this man is a genius. I, damn, a genius. I'm not a genius. I'm a man that's striving to enter into the kingdom. I have nothing to live for. I don't need no accolades. And he spent such time. Now listen, before he came that distance, he was probably nearly 100 miles away driving his motorcycle. There was a group all the way from Wyoming. And believe me, there are not many folks of your color that live in Wyoming, all right? And they come all the way from Wyoming and he examined all of those individuals. So he must have some kind of reputation. He had to. I couldn't get him out of the room because I enjoyed the conversation with him. He wrote me to let me know he was going to Dubai and others. And he always said to me, if I'm ever in that area, I want to just come by and visit. I said, you are always welcome here. Anytime you come. So I didn't tell us everything that he said, but there was something. He says, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And I will. He said, whatever you're doing, it works. Your body restores itself. He made us all of the same body. The body of Yeshua HaMashiach. We have neglected to pray. We'd rather go to the dollar store than to pray. We'd rather sit around and act like jackasses and clown and everything is funny than pray. Can I read some more? Hallelujah. Yah says, the wisdom speaks for almighty Yahweh. We don't understand this. He has power over life and he has power over death. He is the one that exudes the power over life and death. He says, because of your ill-advised activities, you lead men. Your ways that are not productive because you don't obey, yeah. You lead men down to the gates of hell and darkness. This is what God does for his nation. This is what he does. And he reminds us of his excellent power. And when he shows us that we ought to want to pray, we ought to want to come and pray, we should not miss an opportunity to pray. We should get excited about praying. It is what beautifies our countenance and our look and make us look strong. It is Yisraya. There's a verse in Torah I have always, like my ignorance is expressed like all of ours. I'm above all men. I've always read this verse. And I've carefully examined. I'm a student that always carefully examine things. And I go back again and again. And this is the great writing of Shaul unto the Simli there at Romeya. He says this. He talks about those uh, that we may understand the power of what Yah has done. Even his healing of our natural bodies of our natural bodies if we would obey the simple remedies that he has commanded. Our systems are so out of whack. We got to have this. We got to have that. We got to have this. We got to have that. Anything that we consume we should put and cause us to have an invigorated being to work hard and a willingness to work. 
our minds are functioning they're sharp because it feeds this it feeds the nutrients it takes the nutrients that's why they call it waste that's why it comes out of here they call it waste because it has no purpose but the nutrients but the nutrients you're not getting that out of catfish and chicken dumplings all day it's waste so he give us the hub not the capsule now, I don't take stuff like that. Every now and then, I, I have certain things. I, but I, very, so I, don't really, I have never allowed myself to become dependent on anything. Look at what it is. I've never allowed myself, never. If I'm a liar, then this, tell me I'm a liar. Never. I've never allowed myself. I've never been carried away with it. I don't allow it. I don't believe the lies that they are saying. Yes. It is the great miracle power, his mape. His mape. His word is our mape. It is what heals us when we hear it, when we emphasize it, when we fall in love with it. He sends out his Torah and it's mape, it rafa, it heals us. Yeah. When someone began to speak Torah on us, we want to turn our ears away. Someone began to talk to her, we want to talk jive. Huh? Someone began to talk to her, we got something funny. It's always, I hate that in men. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to one today and I said, look, I don't, I don't laugh. Don't, don't talk to me if you think I'm going to laugh. Yeah. You don't do that with me. Yeah. They tell me, loosen up, I am already loose. No, you grow up. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that. It's a sign of immaturity. It's a sign of, 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 of a stunted, mature growth. Listen to this now. I've always misconstrued this. I've examined it and I look at it. And so I said, let me see what the Greek says about this word. Shaul says in the Romans, listen to this. He says, there's one that believes that he can eat everything. All things. He says, and another who is weak and what I define that by in the Greek when that is weak it means one that is sick one whose body is fading one that doesn't have the strength his body is diseased he said the one that is weak he said eats herbs or, or it eats the yaruk not yarek but the yaruk the green stuff the colored greens we, we can't go a day without eating the oxen and the one that is fatted in the stall. We don't have no appetite for the yaruk. He says, so the one that comes that's sick, they understand the discipline and the beauty of Torah. The one that is weak, the one that is yaruk, eats the herbs. Why? They eat the vegetables and the green stuff uh, and to clean their bodies out. And, and to get the, get, get the gut off of us uh, and get the fatness off of us, we might as well deal with that. Yeah. Pausing our, ourselves and pausing our minds and, and we eat the stuff that's pausing us. Yeah. There's nothing more despicable than to me than to look at someone, you know that they're not at the apex of health uh, and they want to tell you, well, you know, yeah, man, I'm doing this. I, I hate that. Yeah. I'm a quiet man. I, like, I know I talk, but I'm quiet when it comes to things. There was a man that came over the other day. He says, Preacher, Mr. Johnson told me to come down. We got these. You'll make sure you get some of those. Those organic carrots. <clears throat> he said, We've been selling them for $10 a box. Straight out of California. He's here. Eat some. They, I started chomping on them. They were nice. Oh, man. He said, We've been selling them for $10 a box. Mr. Johnson said, I can give them to you for $9 a box. I said, it's a nice price. I don't have no money. He looks at me just like that. I said, I don't have no money. He said, preacher, we've been selling for that. I said, I don't, I, I, did you not hear me? I don't have no money. He says, well, what if I call him and he said, drop down to $8 a box. Will you take all 36 I said, no. I don't have money. Period. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. It makes me no different whether you accept it or not. I said, I'll take $10, I'll take 10 boxes at $5 a box. How about that? 
He said, preacher, I'll tell you what. I like you. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 11 boxes for $50. How about that? I throw one. I said, okay now. Now, just show you how, how to interact with people. He quotes scriptures. I didn't say, oh, praise. Quote, praise the Lord. I didn't say that. Come here, son. I said, See, I know how to deal with people. You understand? He's up there just quoting scripture and all that. I said, look at you. Turn around. I want you all to see this. Come on. He's up there just doing his thing. I said, oh, my, look at you. <laughs> Did I thought I said that? I said, I want to tell you something. You hunt, don't you? Preach, I do. I said, and you've been doing all that hunting. You don't make me want, dear man. He said, preach, I'll bring you some beer. I said, not on that. I know you fish. He said, I do, preacher. I fish. He said, I don't fish like the other cats. I fish with bass because I catch fish. I said, now, you won't bring me one bass of fish? I said, man, just something. Three years since I've seen you come here trying to sell me something. Said, preacher, I was wrong, but preacher, I, I'm going to. You understand? See, I didn't try to, he quoted all those scriptures. I said, well, yeah, well, well y'all sure thought. I said, ah. That's not the mindset of me. See, and this is the reason you get offended at that because they think they're smart. Okay, I'll be in with that. Make sure you got the telephone number because he's going to have to respond. You understand? <laughs> he gives us favor with man. <clears throat> That's what he does. Did he begin to tell me his whole story? Preach, I'm sick. Well, you get over here and Get this big chain so with me. I don't, I don't, you'll be all right. I'll just get to sweat them a bit. I said to her husband today, he came over there, walked up on him. I said, man. I said, I know why you did me like that. Because you mad at me, man. You spit all that wood there, man. Make me work like this. I said, you did it because you're mad. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. That man has a sense he know what I am. I get all up in him too. I said, you spit on. Man, I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Split on that boy. I said, I need you for one hour, split some more. I want to show you something here. But that, that, that has no value. Okay, let me read this. Hallelujah. The Torah teaches us the wisdom of Shirak says this. This is what the wisdom says. Listen, Shemak, here to obey. Listen to me, my son. Initially, that's what wisdom says to Shalomo. My son, hear wisdom. And wisdom says, do not disregard me. What we hear tonight, don't disregard it. Do not disregard me. He says, and in the end, you will appreciate my words, my words, what I speak. This is what wisdom says to us, my son. Wisdom says in all, call, in everything you do, in all, in all your work, your mitzvah, the labor of Torah. Your physical labor and all of your work. Be quick. Don't be slothful. Be quick. He says, and industrious. Why? You see, the young man, when he examined me, he didn't realize how I work here. How quick I am. I don't wait for nobody. I don't wait. I don't care who it is. I work. Are you saying that to promote you? No. I work because uh, you working beside me, you're going to work. We must be quick. He says, and not only that, but be industrious. Uh, be industrious. Uh, it is one, when one is industrious, uh, they have this energetic uh, desire. They're energized. Uh, they're dependable. You don't have to call for them. They're ready. They don't have to ask. It was one thing that I would do when I worked in the world. No one had to tell me what to do. I didn't have to go to my manager and say, what do you want me to do? I just went and picked up something. Hallelujah. I hate it when someone asks me anything you want me to do. I mean, get out of my face. You want to do something. You, 
Do you know I'm going to go picking up sticks? You want to do something? I see that. I said, wow, that's all right. It is the truth. It is the truth. I don't care if this bear rod on your backside. In all of my performance reports, they would say, quote, he never needs anyone to instruct him. Because I will go help this one. I will go help that one. I will go help that one. I will help this one. And I learn while I'm helping. I go help this one do that. Well, I can learn something. Huh? Learn. Learn. I will. But we must be industrious. We must labor. We must sweat out of our ponim. We must sweat. We must. Some of us do not have the ability to sweat. Something is wrong. You don't drink no water. You don't drink this living water. You don't like water. Your body is so filled. You know, you, you ask someone, that, oh, I, oh, I've been drinking water. How? That's how, just answer my question. When? Well, I've been, uh, no, 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 no. Listen to me. I'll ask your question. Can I show you an example? I drink this much water every day. Well, well I just started. Well, so that's, so that's all you need to say. You just started. So there's no effect. You can't see it. You understand? Hear this, Yisraya. Be quick. Your daughter's being industrious. You always should be industrious. You will know an industrious woman because you see the eagerness to work. I've had liars that come in. Oh, I'm ready to work. And hell, where are they? You can't find them. When you... I've seen too many. They're full of it. He says, uh, my son, be industrious and be quick and be industrious. This is, this is the catalyst that he says here, and no sickness will overtake you. When you're industrious, when you work, no sickness will overtake you. That's what he says. This is in the book. I tell you where it's at Shurak 31, 22. No sickness will overtake you. If you're industrious, no sickness. Very few were sick in, in the days. Come on, you're older than me. Oh, man. Very few were sick because they worked. You don't recall the time your grandmama and your grand... I, I don't recall, ever see my grandmother sick. She was industrious. She didn't have no car to go to Miss Cut, Cut and Hattie's house. She walked over the clay mountain hill. she comes come sweeping. That old hoe together, that hoe in the garden. Be quick to be industrious. This is what it says, and no sickness. And no sickness. We're lethargic, we're lazy. We don't want to sweat. We don't want to sweat. And no sickness will overtake you. So the young man was saying to me, his body, because why? Because I'm not boasting, I'm industrious. I work. And I love to work. I love to work. And I will work hard. I will work hard because you're working hard. And when you work hard, I will work even the harder. If I come and see you doing something, I won't have to ask you, do you want me to do something? I'll do it. I will be energized by your willingness, your quickness. That's what it says. My son, my son, listen to me. This is what wisdom said. My son, uh, do not regard me. And at the end, you will appreciate my words. Uh, in all of your work, be quick. Whatever you set your whatever you do, be quick to do it. Uh, don't be slowful. Don't neglect that. Be always ready. Be quick. Be quick and industrious. Uh, when someone is industrial, you can always depend upon them. This man didn't lay out of work. He almost took an atom bomb to keep him out of work. He went to work. And he didn't have no easy job. He worked. I see how he worked when I'm with him. Working on his house, he worked harder than us. Get out of my way, man. Sit down. I want you to sit down today. You work on that boat and catch me some fish. Catch you some fish? I said, get out of my way. You got to let me do something, preacher man. I work with him. His work is not sloth. It's not unenergized. We must be quick. We must be industrious. We were plowing the garden the other day. You know what I said? And I'm thinking, I say, this big man, he working that thing like a champ. He works it. And I said, the shimmer, I say, man, that, that big man, he works that. He said, man, I'm thinking the same thing. I said, well, let's walk back. Then. I like the way he does it. It just is almost mastery. He works that thing, man. Because 
Tuck your sippy eyes. The only man I've seen drive that skid loader that doesn't tap the ground. Everybody stares at him. He's the only man. I said, what? Yeah, it is the truth. I said, I get on these Achim all the time. I said, yo, I, I look at this. I said, I just, I said, man, I don't tap the ground. I watched him today as he, as we load that, he didn't tear it up for nothing. He was just as efficient and proficient as one could be. He probably didn't want to hear Rika, Rika, no, don't tap the ground, man. He just didn't tap the ground. I know that's a part of his character. Hallelujah. So if we are quick to be industrious, we won't be sick. If we are quick, that y'all cannot lie. Huh? We'll prove some things out here, all right? In all your work, be quick and industrious, uh, and no sickness will overtake you. Not to say you won't get sick, but it won't overtake you. It won't overtake you. It will not bring you under subjection that you lose your ability to neglect prayer. You lose your ability to cry to God. You don't allow that. We've lost that. We as a nation, we as a people, we as individuals, we have lost that. We have neglected that. When sickness comes, we neglect to pray. We're looking for every kind of resolve. We look for every kind of resolve of what Torah says. We neglect, we are ashamed to do it. We don't want to do it. We must be industrious. Can I show you an example? Some time ago, I began to deal with hell sometime back. I watched individuals go out there and get the beds cleaned up. It, it didn't last long. I knew it was going to last. I'm just being honest. But every bed around here, look, these beds that it should be filled with herbs. I watched it. Because there was no quickness, there was no energeticness, there was no enthusiasm. It was just a mere, mere action activity. That the results are just what they are. Nothing ever prevails. I don't do things like that. I don't do it. And nothing resolved from it. Nothing. Nothing. Well, I'm, I'm going to hit on us. I'm going to hit on me. Hit on you. You as well. Nothing. You won't find that with the, the garden. The garden that I grow. You won't find that. I said the work we put in that garden last year. The straw I put out in the labor. And the rain just, but that's what I learned from that. What did I learn? I would be even more energized this year. I said to my oxymia, we're not going to do raised beds. We can just, just leave it down low like that. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I said, I explained that. We knew yesterday and the other day. It, was, it wasn't stinking, it was stinking. Mm, wet and it's a mess. I'm back there trying to get it out and that stuff is sinking in like you're sinking in mud stinking but that's alright I love what I do I love it mama I can work all day long in the sun I, I get I, the, the, the more sun the better I get I do I can roll in it I can uh huh they work in it the men out there doing blacktop, that's when they make their money. Uh-huh. There are women out there, the Mexican women are picking the beans for you to sit down and, and buy that damn of can of green beans full of sodium. They got their babies out there picking too. This is a wicked generation. It's wicked. And we're fat and greedy and our health is bad. Our health is so bad we don't have the ability to pray. There was a time in my days as a young boy, remember, they would get the cut and so come, let, let's pray for cut and so and so. They didn't have no telephone, but the word got out. You'll find Johnny Lewis running over here, Miss, Miss, cutting Koran, Mama said, uh, Miss, Miss, cut, cutting Betty Lewis sick. And they all go, go out and over yonder. You tell your mama, I said, I'll be there. And my grandmother would break out over that hill with that apron on and that 
Sure she did. See, I remember things like that. They were industrious people. And they were not sick. They didn't have no doctors to go to. They didn't have no money for the doctors. Here you got Medicare, Medicaid. You got Obamacaid. Obama sure loved those faggots, doesn't he? He loved them, sisters. That's a shame. So we learn how to be industrious. Well, what if I get sick? Can I show I want to read this for you. It says in Melchim, 2 Kings, hear this. It says this, it says now when Elisha, or Elisha, Elisha, it says when he had fallen, when he had fallen sick, we all going to lead this life. Great messenger of Yahweh, great strength. Listen, we had fallen sick of his sickness, of his holy, the disease, <clears throat> wherefore he died. Wherefore he died. Wherefore he died. He didn't call for the Apocrypha. He fell sick. And he died. We all are going to die. Wherefore he died. And Yoash. The king of Yisrael came down to him. And he wept. Over his face. He cried. Over Elisha. And said, my father, my Abba, my Abba, the chariots of Yisrael and the horsemen thereof. I see the gates. I see the heavens. I see the victory in Yah's power. Before he died, he gave him, he said, take the, the bow and the arrow. Shoot it out the window. God's going to give you victory. There was such a great strength of Yah's power in him. That this event happened. And it came to pass as they were burying a man. <clears throat> and behold, <clears throat> they spied out a band of man, men. <clears throat> and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down, you see, when we fall on this man, this anointed one of Yah, when the man was let down, touched the bones of, of Elisha, he revived and he stood upon his feet. Yeah. Just like the widow with the woman who had been sick for all those years. Yeah. And spent all of her money. Yeah. Every doctor, when she touched, touched that body, the, the body, that, the bones that were never broken, yeah. she got up. And she was healed. Hallelujah. God's going to have to heal us of our issues. He's going to have to heal us of the issue of our neglect. We don't want to pray. We don't, want, we don't have the love that we should have. Sit down on a meal with collard greens and cornbread and told the yah for it. Hallelujah. What are we have in the day? Well, I'll do my own little thing. That's how we do it. Well, what about you? Well, I, you come see what I eat. They are dumped. Some of those carrots and that rice. Man, was that delicious. I put some Brussels sprout on that. Do I have some greens or some salad? That's it. I just pile it in one plate. On top of each other. And to me, it was just, it was beyond structures. I just enjoyed that. I may say to my show, what are we having today? What are we having? Collard green? Okay, bring me the collard green. Bring me one of those biscuits. Or anything else now. I don't want all that vegan patties and all of that now. I eat that. I'm all right. You got some potatoes over there? Bake me one. No, I'm not frying no fish, no catfish. Nah, nah, nah. nah. You go to look at that little box I got here. Nothing in there. I keep a few things for my little girls. Almond milk and some of the raw jalapeno cheese. I bought it for you. I'll take it home. No, 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 no. Take that milk. Oh, no, 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 no. They drink it up. No, no, no. Please don't let us take it home. We'll won't leave it here so we can come back again. I bought it for you. I'll take it home. No, no. Please, please, please. Telling on you. Mm -hmm. 
take that cheese home. No, 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 no. Taste better here. There's nothing over there. I don't have no fancy menu that I eat separately from us here. I don't. And I could eat steak every day if I want. I don't want steak. Give me the collard greens and a piece of cornbread. So I will work the garden to make sure the herbs are strong. The cabbages, one of the best essentials one can eat. Cabbage, raw, cooked. Yeah, you all say, yeah, that's right. But hell, you don't do it. You don't want to eat that unless you got fried chicken with it. The ball game. I don't blame you. I like, I love fried chicken. Stop that now. Stop that. We must learn how to be industrious, to be quick to work. And no sickness will overtake you. He didn't say you will not get sick, but no sickness will overtake you. No sickness will take you under that, but no sickness will overtake you. Elisha got sick and he died. He did not say no sickness will overtake you. If one is weak among us, then feed them herbs. Feed them greens. Feed them, they tell you chicken soup is the best. No. Feed them herbs. Grow rosemary, grow the herbs, mix it in, give it a nice little flavor. We don't want to do that. I don't understand that, Yisraeli. We don't want to do that. We'd rather go down here to the dollar store and spend $30 on some damn junk that's killing you. When a man eats, there's health, his body, he's strong, he feels strong. Food is to give us energy. It is to restore that which has been broken down in the course of the day. That's what it's supposed to do. And that's what it does. You eat protein because if you see men that are muscular and their arms are formed, it's because they have protein in their body. And a muscle is something that is a fiber that is torn down and it rebuilds itself. It connects itself. When we're strong, the arms look strong. The arms were not, come on, Yisrael, you don't, don't get upset when the arms were not flabby and all that. It wasn't like that. We're few. They, come on, let's get real. Yeah. Men arms like that. That's not so. We're not industrious. Yeah. Might have been skinny, but they were wiry and strong. That's just a fact. And the ones that were thick, they had big, thick arms, and their arms were, it, 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 it was, it, it was, it, it constituted the kind of, but their bodies were thick. Right. My grandma was a big woman, but she was a thick, big woman. She was thick. She wasn't no overly obese woman. She was thick. And their bodies become so soft, they're like mush. Men and women. I shouldn't be. She shouldn't be. I'm not, listen, you all, this is for our health. That's why we're so constantly sick, all of us. I said to my I can't, I can't afford to get sick. I don't say that. I just, I can't. Even if I was sick, you wouldn't know it. That's just me. I wouldn't put the burden on you. That's just me. I want to live to see his sons. And my regressing like Elisha that I die is coming. One last verse in. I want to close from here, all right? You all might as well love me. Yeah. 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 Now, he gives us and shows the provision that he has made for everything he created. Listen to what he says in Telium Psalms 104. Listen. He waters the hills from his chamber. He waters the great mountain ranges from his chamber. The earth is satisfied with the fruits of Yah's works. It yields. Seasoning. Uh, fruits and yield in its due season. He calls, that's what he does, he calls the hasi or the grass to grow for the cattle. That's what he calls that to grow for. He didn't cause the corn for the cattle. He calls the grass to grow for the cattle. He says, uh, and the herb, the herbs. And he also talk about, he says, and the herb, the tender shoots. That, 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 that colored greens when they're shooting out of the ground, that tender green. Talk to me, mama. He did that for man. He says, uh, and the herb for the service uh, of man. That he eats well, he eats right. Uh, his body is reconstituted daily, his teeth are strong, uh, his mind is strong. His body is vibrant, his wife the same thing. 
He made the herb for man, for man, for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. That's what he made the herbs for, to bring forth food. For who? For us. The herbs that will heal us. And that's Yah's way, not, not a capsule. Not some part of you by the tell you it's going to do this, you're going to lose 50 pounds of strength. That's bullshit thing. You're going to lose this when you get this right. You get the plate right. I eat healthy. What? You, you eating all that and you, you're not eating healthy? We can't go one day without a, 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 a chicken foot. It's just a fact. We have to eat them things, Mama. You know that. We can't go one day. We just can't. It's just a fact. And because our minds are so despondent, we don't want to pray. And it's just a fact because our bodies, our bodies don't feel like doing nothing. No, sir. I appreciate the labor of my achim. When I get over there and work with him, I want them to know, man, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do you wrong. I know what we got to do. I know the homes got to stay warm. I know what we have to do. I'm, I'm going to be quick about it. And I am quick. And I will roll on you if you don't get quick about it. You should be quick about it. Your daughters are on you. You that are listening in your home, clean, should be quick and be industrious, always finding something to do. Same thing in this communal environment. Always find something to do. Always. You can work a bad thing. You can work that. Don't, get, don't let this euphoric for the moment overtake you. And then you do it for two or three days. It start getting hot. You say, uh-uh. Yeah. I'm not going to do a garden like that. I got that garden. That greenhouse looks so beautiful. All those plants. 3,500. I'm going to plant them all too. I'll get my friend back. Every last one of them. I'm going to have to. I get Honestly. I can do all that one day. I get out there in the morning, and I start in the morning. I have them all planted in one day. I have devised my own system. I know how to do it. You understand? I know how to. I did it the year when I did it up there, and I had 3,000 plants. I planted every last one by myself. I started that morning about 9. I was through about 5 that evening. Punched the holes in the ground, laid each one there. And I say, yeah, I can't be doing all this bending. So I realized, you take the stick, push it down. Ah, I roll. How about that? So I could have some collard greens. Some nice fresh onions. Some cabbages. 600 cabbages. I didn't grow all them before I see them. One makes you eat something, too. In all my days, my mother always had a little garden. We had that red clay known village, and she didn't have no tilling. Boy, you went out there and dig that up, and we had a mallet. And that red clay was hard. You had to pick it. A nice size garden. And so I always devised me a plan. See, I don't look at things and see how long it's going to take me. I look, I, I, I see something that wide. I, 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 I say, okay, I draw me out a spot. I get that down. I say, oh, wow, that's nice. Okay, I draw me another spot like that. I get that down. Then I look back and say, okay, I got that much down. Draw me another spot. That's how I do things. Get that down. I look back. Whoo, and before you know it, you're down at the end. So you keep looking to the end. You'll never get there. You become more frustrated. Your heart will not be sincere. You won't do it with faithfulness. That's how I've always done things. That's how this place was built. One building at a time, my preacher friend. You will not get ahead of yourself. You try to do two, three, four building, you surely will mess up. Just do one building at a time. You can build a city if you do it right. We can build a faith if we do it right to trust Yah. It begins by not neglecting prayer. We cannot neglect prayer. And the liars that say they love praying, they don't want to pray. We don't pray in our home, that we don't teach our young ones to pray. And it's just a fact. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. Yahshua's mighty name, I'm going to dismiss. You all remember Zachim Benamin. I'll share that with you when I have time, all right? May Yah strengthen you all, you that are listening. Pray for Zachim 
May the riches of your rest upon you. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, as we turn to Yerushalayim, yeah, we do barak you for all things. We pray for our ark, precious Achim, our ark Simeon, bless and strengthen. Zachim Benjamin, touch mightily. Our ark here being his faithfulness, compassion, his caring, and all the Achim, the ones that have labored today. We pray for them all in Yeshua's name. Give us strength and wisdom that we will understand the great appreciation one for another yeah. touch us all yeah. and guide us and give us wisdom take zakhin arachot jennifer and them down the road safely tonight touch them in your shoes name we give them guidance as they journey home a whole plant and a family we ask you for all of your riches and your blessings zakhin yeshuran his ishor and all of us bless our, our Simeon. heal his body his mind above all zakhin benamin pray for him is your. We ask these simple blessings in your Yeshua's mighty name that you restore us, restore your house. We ask in your Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.